Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to the Acts Ministry broadcast. We're now in the book of Jonah. Hope you enjoyed the book of Obadiah, incredible message in Obadiah, teaching us about history. And when we get to the book of Micah, put Micah, Obadiah, and Amos together, we see the judgment of God. We see judgment spoken of in the book of Jonah, but it is averted because of repentance. So when you look at the book of Jonah, it is not a book just for children. It is an incredible book that teaches us some incredible lessons about mankind and about ourselves. When you look at the book of Jonah in chapter 1, we see that the Lord told Jonah, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. So here's Jonah. God tells Jonah what to do. And we cannot be critical of Jonah because how many times have God told us to do some things? just didn't have a whale to swallow us or a great fish to swallow up, but we were swallowed up by something else. Sometimes it was just depression or anger or frustration. And many of us today were in a situation, we're in a confinement because we are not doing what God has called us to do. So here God says to Jonah, go to Nineveh. And Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. It says that he got on the ship trying to flee from the presence of God. Now, what this says to us is that Jonah, he, he didn't understand uh, the omnipresence um, of God or the omniscience of God. He didn't understand it. He didn't understand it like we understand it today or should understand it today. He actually thought he could flee from the presence of the Lord. There's nowhere we can go to escape the presence of the Lord. The psalmist tell us, David tells us in the 139th Psalms, that wherever we go, if we take the wings of the morning and fly, he's there. If we go and make our bed in hell, God is there. God is everywhere. There is no place that God is not present. Because if there is a place where God is not present, it is impossible for that to be a place. Since God created space, and space is within God. You know, God doesn't live in space. He doesn't live in time. Time and space is within God as his whole creation is. God is bigger than his whole creation. The immensity of God, how great, how big God is. Jonah apparently didn't have as good a theology as we have. So he thought he could escape from the very presence of God and he got on the ship to run away. And you know the story how God sent a wind. God sent a wind. Now, when you look at this, it seems like this is something horrible or terrible. It isn't. It is a wind that God sends because of love. It's a wind that is sent, that is stirred up because of the love of God. It's a blessing and it's a privilege if God comes looking for us. And what we have to learn to do is, is not resist. We have to learn to do is not complain or get upset with the chastening of the Lord. Because God chastens those whom he loves. He corrects. Thank God for correction. It is his corrections that are going to keep us out of hell if we allow him to correct us. So it shouldn't be grievous to us. But Jonah, here he is in a ship. God sends a wind and the wind holds the ship up, the men, they are terrified, the men that are on board, and they find Jonah asleep. Can you imagine that? Here they are terrified, they're in a great storm, probably a hurricane, and Jonah is asleep. He's asleep. You're talking about sleeping at the wrong time. How was he asleep on the ship during this incredible storm? When they awake Jonah and they tell Jonah what is going on, he began to tell him that tell them that he believed in the great God, uh, Jehovah, Jehovah, Yahweh, and it made the men very afraid. So what the men do, they try their very best to make it to land. And Jonah told them, you got to throw me overboard. But they didn't want to throw Jonah overboard, so they did everything they could. But then it became obvious it was not going to work. So Jonah said, throw me overboard. They threw Jonah overboard, and the sea 
ceased from her raging. That is Jonah chapter 1, verse 15. So they took up Jonah, cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the man feared the Lord exceedingly and offered his sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now, I want you to think about this. Here are these men on the ship. They don't believe in the one and true God. They don't. They don't know him. They're idolatry worshipers. But in, in the midst of Jonah's mess, in the midst of Jonah's disobedience, we see revival coming to these, these men, coming into their lives. See, God is going to make do with everything. He's a God that will make do of everything, all the scraps. That's why he said, he said, don't leave any leftovers. Take up the fragments. So even the fragments, God knows how to use the fragments of our disobedience to be a blessing and to help others. So Jonah was swallowed by a great fish. The Bible says that in Jonah chapter 1, verse 17, now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. God had prepared a fish fish he prepared in the book of Genesis and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights so God had already knew that Jonah would exist that Jonah would become disobedient so God had already prepared uh, Jonah's punishment now I want you to see this I want you to look at it we see it as Jonah's punishment but it also is his deliverance and that's what we have to see when we deal with God when we deal with the chastening of the Lord, the things that God does for us to help us, do you see it as punishment or do you see it as deliverance? Because if the fish doesn't swallow Jonah, then he drowns to death. He drowns to death in the state of disobedience. He drowns to death in the state of disobeying God and running from God in the state of rebellion. But God prepares a fish. So is the fish punishment or is the fish deliverance? We got to look at that. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Axe Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in axeministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. You got to look at that. The next time you think something is punishment, look at it. Look at it. Look at it closely. Is it punishment or is it deliverance? We have to see that. Many things that we thought was punishment was actually our deliverance. Many things God took from us or didn't allow us to have, and we thought we were being punished, but later on we realized that that thing would have killed us. The sea would have killed Jonah. He would have drowned to death. But God prepared a fish, and the fish was his deliverance. Deliverance from what? deliverance from himself the one thing that all of us must understand our greatest enemy is not the devil our greatest enemy is ourselves because satan needs us to agree with him he needs us to come into a conspiracy with him against god before before he can do anything in our lives so so what we call punishment is really deliverance thank god for deliverance even though it seemed like it came in the form of punishment. Our God is a great God. In chapter 2, we see Jonah really praying. We see him praying. Isn't that amazing? He's crying out to God. And the Bible says, the Bible says in Jonah chapter 2, the book of Jonah chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, Out of the belly of hell cried I, and you heardest my voice. You see that? Jonah said, I cried out of the belly of hell. Now that's, that sounds familiar, right? Because Jesus talks about as Jonah was in the fish's belly three days, three nights, so shall he be in the heart of the earth. So was was that punishment or was that deliverance? Because even though his punishment, he was punished, it brought about our deliverance. 
So here in the book of Jonah, you see that in the book of Jonah, uh, God is using Jonah in a way that Jonah doesn't even realize. See, all this is tied together. God knows us. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows every every step of our lives. Matter of fact, God has already walked every step of every one of our lives. He knows everything, everything in our path, everything in our path. He knows where all the pitfalls are. He knows where all the hurt is. He knows everything. And brothers and sisters, he's already made provision. He's already made provision to bring about deliverance in our lives. So, so what a great and awesome God we serve. The thing we see here, even in chapter 1 concerning the fish, to know that as great as the sea were, was, the sea is a humongous body of water, and, and, and God knew exactly where that ship was going to be. God knew exactly where they was going to throw Jonah over at. He had that, he had, I said, well, the New Testament says, well, he had the fish uh, located in the exact spot at the exact time to bring about Jonah's deliverance and Jonah's punishment, if you will. But I see it more as deliverance because if, if he's not there, then Jonah is, Jonah is, dis, Jonah is destroyed. He destroyed in a, in a, state of rebellion. I don't think any of us want to die uh, fighting against God. I don't think we want to risk what the outcome of that will be. So Jonah, Jonah, Jonah is praying now. He leaves from running. He is praying. He's crying out of the belly of hell, he claims. And we see that uh, this is something that the Lord Jesus used when talking about his death, his burial, and his resurrection. So Jonah cries out to the Lord. Now Jonah says some things that, that it, it shows us that he really doesn't understand uh, God because he says that uh, I'm cast out of your sight, yet I will look again towards the holy temple. Uh, you're never out of God's sight. God is everywhere. There's no place we can go that we're out of the sight of God. Sometimes in the midst of us being swallowed up by situations and circumstances in our lives, we feel like God is not there. It is impossible for God not to be present. He's omnipresent. But Jonah, Jonah says, now I, you, I'm out of your sight. You can't even, you don't even see me anymore. That's not true. He was there. He was there with Jonah. And he was not je there just to bring about punishment, to but bring about comfort, to bring about deliverance, delivering Jonah from himself. So in chapter 2 of the book of Jonah, chapter 2 of the four chapters, we see Jonah really, really praying. And the Bible says in that chapter that this fish is going to regurgitate or vomit Jonah on dry land. I want you to stay tuned until tomorrow as we uh, talk about some more uh, things in the book of Jonah that is very applicable to our lives. So stay tuned until tomorrow as we get deeper into the book of Jonah. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway, and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank.